the right rod, the right reel, the best line, the best lure, and the trophy of a lifetime. All that's great, but none of it matters if you don't have the right knot. That's right guys, you can spend countless hours practicing, making sure you have the right equipment, the best rods, the best reels, the best line, the best lure, and the best presentation. But it all boils down to that one little thing that a lot of people overlook. And that's why today I'm going to help you out and go over my top three knots that every angler should know today on Captain's Corner. Why not? It's absolutely true. Everything boils down to that knot. No matter how much you've learned or how hard you've worked, it all boils down to how strong and successful that little tiny knot is going to be for you. There are hundreds of styles of knots and you can watch dozens of videos of people telling you why this knot is better or why that knot is better or why you shouldn't use that knot. But don't worry, that's what I'm here for. I'm going to break it down the way I do best and show you my top three knots that every angler needs to know. Learning how to use these three knots, how to tie them properly, and where to use them is going to help you out tremendously. And we'll cover just about every single situation you can get yourself into. From my all-around general purpose knot to my go-to heavy action, heavy cover knot, and of course, the best knot to use to tie on leaders and attach line to line. All three of these knots are not only incredibly reliable, incredibly strong, but they're also very easy. Anyone at any level can easily learn these knots and use them practically when you're out there on the water. Now the first knot, this is my most general and most basic knot. I use it 95% of the time. It's a very simple knot, but very, very strong. If you can tie your own shoe, you can tie a Palomar knot. Over my many years of fishing, I've experimented with many, many different knots, but I have evolved to only using the Palomar knot for 95% of my fishing. But it's incredibly effective, incredibly strong, and it's very versatile. Learning how to properly tie a Palomar knot is going to be a tremendous advantage to you as an angler. No matter whether you're fishing banks, whether you're fishing off boats, you're fishing salt water or fresh water, a Palomar knot works very, very well with almost every line out there. And it's actually quite quick and easy to do on the go. Tying a Palomar is very simple. The first part of tying a Palomar is much like tying your shoe. Stick it through the eye one time, pull it through, bend it back around, and stick it back through. You're creating a loop at the end of that line. A doubled up line with a loop at the end. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that that loop at the end is plenty long, longer than the lure or the hook that you're tying it around. Take the tag end and your main line and hold them together, like so. Take that loop and both the tag end and the main line and tie a very simple overhand knot with it. like so like the first tie of your shoe now you take the main loop that you just tied and bring your lure or your hook through the loop and pull on the main line and the tag line and cinch it down super easy super simple very tight knot now all you'd have to do is cut off that tag end line tying a palomar knot with fluorocarbon line, like Casking's new Covert line, is just as simple. You just have to take an extra precaution because fluorocarbon is a lot more brittle and a lot easier to damage when you're tying any kind of knot. You want to double this line up. Always stick it through the eye one way and come back the other way to create your loop. The biggest mistake I see people making when using fluorocarbon line, never take your line and pinch it to be able to stick it through the eye. By doing that, you're actually damaging the line by pinching it at the end. That portion of the knot is the most critical spot of the knot when it's completely tied together. You've already reduced its strength and created a breaking point, whether you knew it or not. Another critical factor when tying Palomar knots with fluorocarbon or even monofilament line 
is the burn or the friction that knot creates when you cinch it down. Once you get to this point, you're going to want to wet that line as best as you can. Lick it, spit it, or just dip it in the water. Make sure you get it very wet. That's going to help reduce the friction and burn of the line as you're tightening and cinching down that knot. Another trick is when you're tightening down that line, rather than pulling on the tag line and the main line together, first try to cinch it down by simply just pulling the tag line. If you pull both the tag line and main line together as the knot cinches down, it'll create extra friction and burn on the main line and actually twist it up and kink it up. To keep a nice, straight, clean main line, make sure you cinch it down just with the tag line first. So there you have it, the Palomar knot. Super simple, super easy, and incredibly strong. Making it a great knot for the majority of fishing styles. And that's why I use it on at least 95% of my knots. Next is a knot that I primarily use for heavy cover. When I'm doing things like flipping, pitching, punching, or anytime I'm using a stout, straight shank hook. Something I want a little extra strength to, but I'm never worried about that knot ever coming out. It works fantastic with almost every line, but it works especially well on braid. We're talking about the Snell Knot. A Snell Knot. A very strong, very simple knot that works incredibly well when you're talking about straight shank hooks like flipping hooks. To me, there's nothing better than a Snell Knot, especially when you're talking about heavy hooks and heavy, heavy cover. It's the only knot I really use when it comes to flipping or punching in heavy cover because it gives one very unique advantage. The nature of a Snell Knot creates a leverage point which will actually help you with hook sets. When you set that hook, the weight will pivot the hook upwards, creating an even better opportunity for hook sets. Having that hook point leverage up like that, you're bound to get a much better hook set rather than a straight tie pulling straight out of the mouth. It's the reason I only tie Snell Knots when I'm talking about heavy cover, flipping, and pitching. Tying a Snell Knot is actually very, very simple. Take your line and make sure you stick it through the front, the hook side of the eye. With the hook point being the front of the hook, stick it through the front of that eye. Like so. Pull the line straight down the back of the hook and bend it back over top. So you have a loop of line laying on the back end of the hook. Take your two fingers and pinch that right there. Take the tag line and simply wrap it around the shank of the hook behind the eye five or six times. One, three, four, five. You can pinch onto it to hold that loop there. After you've wrapped it four, five or six times, the tag line that's left, stick it back through this loop. Grab it and hold it tight to the hook. Take your main line and pull it nice and tight and cinch it down. Cinch it down nice and tight. Grab it and give it a good yank. A super tight, super strong knot that'll help you out with any kind of heavy cover and give you an advantage of an awesome hook set. One very important thing to note, make sure you always put that line through the front of the eye or the hook point side of the eye first. If you run the line through the back side first, your hook set is going to go backwards rather than forward like you want. The Snell Knot, the only knot I use when it comes to flipping, pitching, punching, heavy cover, and heavy wire straight shanked hooks. The beauty of a Snell Knot is its strength in its simplicity. It works very much like a hangman's noose. It cinches down on itself every time pressure is applied. Incredibly strong and incredibly simple. And a very interesting fact, Back in the early days of recreational fishing, a lot of hooks didn't have the eyes like they have today. A Snell knot was the only knot they used on just a straight shanked hook. Even without an eye, every time pressure was applied, it cinched down and held that hook nice and tight. That is an excellent knot. The Palomar and the Snell knot. When it comes to tying on hooks or lures, those two knots are the only two I really use anymore. Finally, the last knot you really need to know. How to attach two lines together. A good knot that'll tie two lines together has to be a very small fine knot so it can easily get through the guides or the eyes of your rod. 
too big of a knot, too bulky of a knot, is going to foul up in those eyes. You're not going to get long casts and it can cause a lot of havoc when it comes to bird nests or anything else when it wraps up on the spool. A good line to line knot is very small yet very strong. There are a bunch of different knots out there that will do this. And you're probably gonna hear all different opinions. The FG knot is the best. The Alberto knot is the best. Whatever it is, there's a whole bunch of them. But in my personal opinion, and in all my experience, you can't find a simpler, smaller, stronger, and easier knot than the double uni knot. I've tried all the other knots and a lot of them work great, but they're a little more difficult. And some of them are so difficult, there's no way you're tying them when you're out on the water. They take too much time, they're too complicated. That makes some of those knots nearly impossible to deal with. Double uni knot is very strong, very simple, and actually fairly quick to do. I almost exclusively use a double uni knot to tie any kind of leader or line to line together. For this demonstration, I'm just gonna use Casking Cast Pro Braid and Casking Covert fluorocarbon line. The braided line is gonna represent the line coming off of your rod, your main line. And the fluorocarbon is gonna be your leader. First things first, take your fluorocarbon on one side, take your main braid on the other side, and you're gonna to wanna to overlap them about one foot in length. Fly the two lines hold together, Take your braided line and create a loop, bringing it back over top, laying it over top of it, like that. The loop goes down and the, and the braid lays on top of it. Hold the fluorocarbon and the braided line together. And you're now gonna wrap this tag inside the loop around both the fluorocarbon and the braid. You're gonna wanna wrap that five or six times. Making sure each wrap goes over go over both the fluorocarbon and the braided lines. So you're gonna create something that looks like this. Now, holding on to the tag line, and the two other lines over here, start pulling it nice and tight. You're gonna pull it tight, and you're gonna see it wrap around itself, and create a knot right there. Slide your hands down to the other end, and do the same thing you just did but opposite with the fluorocarbon making the loop. So your fluorocarbon now makes a loop, goes over top, hold it together, and wrap the fluorocarbon around both the braid and the fluorocarbon inside of the loop five or six times. Once you've got that, you can see the fluorocarbon is wrapped evenly around. Hold on to the tag of the fluorocarbon and start winching it down. Right here, it is very important because that braid will burn into that fluorocarbon and create a weak point. You wanna make sure you get that knot very, very wet, as wet as you possibly can. Get it wet, holding on to your line over here and holding on to the tag over here. Pull it nice and tight. Winch it down until it becomes a nice, tight little knot. Now you've got a knot over here or the braid tied around the floral and a knot over here of the floral tied around the braid. Grab the main line of the floral past the knot over here and grab the main braid over here past the knot. Wrap them around your fingers or whatever you want. By pulling them apart, those two knots will come together and give them a good tug and they'll come together nice and tight. That is a strong, strong knot that's not gonna go anywhere. Cut your tag lines off as close as you possibly can and that's it. Perfect little knot holding braid and fluorocarbon together. That is a small, tiny little knot that will easily go through every guide of every rod. It won't get fouled up in the reel itself, and it's super strong, not going to break on you easily. Great knot. The double uni knot is the only knot I use when I'm talking about tying two lines together. And there you have it. Three super easy yet super strong knots that will help you out to become a better angler altogether. Learning those three knots will cover every situation you may encounter. And those are the three knots I use every time I'm on the water. The Palomar knot for just about everything. The Snell knot when I need a powerful, heavy knot, flipping, punching, pitching. And anytime I gotta attach a line to a line, like a leader to a main line, the double uni knot. All three knots are very easy to use, quick to tie, and very strong. 
But like anything else, practice, practice, practice. You may not be on the water right now, that's a perfect time to practice your knots. Guys, I really hope you enjoy this and I hope you learned a little something. If you did, make sure you smash the heck out of that like button and leave a comment on anything else you'd like to see us film. We'll do our very best to make a video out of each and every one of those. But most importantly, subscribe to that channel and stay subscribed because there's plenty more coming right here 